For this mask, you will need to cut one large face mask, one top lining and one bottom, and you'll need to cut four straps. As you can see here, I have those pieces cut for you. You can see exactly what you need. Here's my full face mask. This is the top lining and the bottom lining. And then I have my four straps cut. We're going to iron all of our straps the same way. So we'll repeat this process four times. We'll flip it so it's wrong side up. We'll fold in approximately a quarter of an inch to the wrong side on this short end and give it a press. And now we're gonna fold the entire rectangle in half long ways. So we'll fold it raw edge to raw edge all the way across. Take your time and get a really crisp, nice and neat fold here because this line will help us in the next few presses. So I have the whole thing folded in half. Now I'll open it up and you can see the crisp line across the center. We'll use that as a guide. We're gonna fold the bottom edge up to that middle line and press it all the way across. Same thing, give it a good steam, get a nice crisp fold. This will certainly help to put the whole strap together. And then we'll do the same thing on the other edge. Since it's easier to flip it around, we're gonna bring that bottom edge again up to the middle. So they should be meeting right there in the center. And we'll press it all the way across. And then we'll once again fold the whole entire strap in half long ways. So you'll see now when I fold it in half, I have nice finished edges at both the top and the bottom. So take a second to give that a good press. And then repeat that step with the three remaining straps. I have black thread in my sewing machine just to make it easier for you to see. You're going to top stitch along this open long edge of your strap, just sealing it closed so it doesn't open up anymore. You can take some back tacking at the start. And you want to get pretty close to that edge, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch away. And then just sew all the way down the side. When you get to the bottom, you can put some back tacking. You don't necessarily have to go across. This should be enough to keep everything in place. There you go. Now your strap is locked closed and you're going to repeat the same thing to the other three straps. Here I have my top lining piece and my bottom lining piece. We're going to press and start to finish this straight edge that goes across the middle of our mask. We'll do the same thing to both. First, we'll press up about an eighth of an inch all the way along that straight edge. You can see I have about an eighth of an inch pressed up and then we're just gonna fold up another eighth of an inch. So we're creating a double fold or turned and stitched hem across the bottom of these lining pieces. So now on the inside, when it's double pressed like this, there's no raw edge visible. And on the outside, we just have the bottom lining. We'll do the same thing to the top lining. So this is wrong side up. I'm gonna fold in about an eighth of an inch all the way across. And then I'll just take that and fold another eighth of an inch in. 
So here I have my top lining piece with the long straight edge folded twice in, and we're just gonna top stitch along this fold to lock it down in place. We're gonna sew as close as we can to the fold. Typically we try to get about 16th of an inch in from that, so it lays as flat as possible. We'll back tack at the start, and sew all the way down. Again, just keeping that fold in place all the way. There you go. On this side, I've locked the fold down in place, and on this side, I just have my top stitching across the front. Again, it's really visible because of my black thread, but there you go. And we'll do the same thing with our bottom piece. We have it double folded, and we'll back tack at the start and stop and lock that fold in place. place here and across the front here. Now we're going to sew the darts on both our full piece, it goes this way, and also each of the darts that's on our top and our bottom lining. I have my seam allowance marked here so it's easier for you to see. It's just a quarter of an inch though, so with practice you probably won't need to mark it at all. So you're going to fold your fabric right sides together, line up the raw edges, if you want to place a pin at the top to hold it in place while you work, you certainly can. And you're just going to sew right on that quarter inch line. It's always easiest to start at the outer edge and work your way towards the point of the dart. So we'll drop our needle right on there up at the top and then I'm safe to take my pin out, do some back tacking, and sew down to the point of the dart. lock those stitches in place. You're going to do the same thing for the dart at the other edge. Fold it right sides together, line up these raw edges, sew right along that quarter inch line. And then you're going to do the same thing to the dart at the bottom of the bottom lining. And at the top of the top lining. Let me get those raw edges a little more lined up. There we go. So here we have our finished mask with both the top and the bottom dart sewn. And it does just make it a little bit more comfortable for the person wearing the uh, mask if we press these seam allowances to a side. Don't stress about opening them or even which side you press it to. Just as long as they're pressed to a side, the mask itself tends to lay a little bit flatter when it's on the person's face. So we'll do the same thing here with the top lining and the bottom lining as well. Pick a side and just press it nice and flat over towards that side. So here I have the full front mask piece right side up and I have marked my seam allowance in the four corners just so it's easier for you to see exactly where I'm going to place my straps. So the straps get put right up against the sides of the mask 
You just wanna drop them down or raise them up that quarter of an inch seam allowance so they're not sewn into your seam allowance when you put all your layers together. So here I have the raw edge of this strap up against this side edge. And again, it's dropped down a quarter of an inch. When you pin these in place, pin them from the side this way. Helps if you kind of turn it a little bit. With the pin head sticking out to the side, this will just make it easier when we go to put the next layer on. So same thing, I'll go around to all four corners. Down here in this one, I'm gonna have the raw edge lined up with the side, but you can see I have it raised up so it's not inside the seam allowance, and I'll pin it in place. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the two on this side. So I'll find my raw edge, line it up, and make sure that it's dropped down a quarter of an inch. Then this last one, it's raised up a quarter of an inch. And now all four straps are pinned into place. So here I have my mask with the four straps pinned onto the right side of the mask. And I'm gonna take my lining pieces and put them wrong side up so the right sides of my fabric are together. And I'm going to pin them on top. So I'll make sure that the corners are lined up. This is the top lining piece. And I'll make sure my darts are lined up. And then depending how comfortable you are at your sewing machine, you might want to add a couple more pins along these curves to keep your raw edges in place as you're sewing along. And then same thing, I'll go over here to this corner, put a pin, and then fill in if I need any along the curve. You can see now why it's a little bit easier since I have these pin heads sticking out. I can easily just grab it and pinch everything in place. Now pin through both layers of the mask and the strap underneath. And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. Pinch it, hold everything in place, and repin both layers of the mask and the strap. We'll do the same thing for the bottom lining. Let's just move these strap ends out of the way. We'll hold the lining wrong side facing up so the right sides of our fabric are touching. Let me flip it around this way. It might be easier for you to see. I'll line up the darts in the center. I'll line up the edge, the corner over here at the side. And then fill in with a few pins to keep this curved edge in place as I sew. Same thing over here. Line up the corners and fill in with a few pins along this edge. And one thing I have not done yet is repin over here on the side. So I'll give this a pinch and repin through all the layers. And I'm gonna pin this overlap in place. And the whole point of this lining is so that it overlaps about a half of an inch, maybe even a little bit more. And that's what allows the filter to be placed in there. So I'll repin this one. And then anchor this overlap in the lining in place so it doesn't come unoverlapped or wiggle out of place when we sew around. Okay, so we have all the layers of our lining and our mask and our straps all pinned together. And we're gonna sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. There's no need to leave any kind of a gap for turning since we can get to the inside of the mask this way and flip it that way. Just be really careful that you don't accidentally sew any of the ends of your straps while you're going. So we're gonna drop on a nice straight place. And we'll just sew all the way around. When you get to a corner, just make sure you stop needle down, press your foot up, so it's easier to have a nice sharp turn. And again, as I go, I'm gonna make sure that I move these tails out of the way so I don't sew over them by accident.
Once I get back here to where I started, I'll just put some back tacking to lock everything in place. You can take a second here before you turn this to trim your seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. This will help hide any raw edges that are inside of there when we uh, flip the mask around and finish off the seams. Again, totally not necessary, but this definitely will probably make it a little more comfortable for whoever might be wearing it. So we'll trim this down just to about an eighth of an inch so that that seam allowance will be caught inside of there when we flip it. And then we're just gonna turn the mask right side out and give it a good press. So we wanna make sure that you pull on each strap to get them all the way out and get that nice corner at the top and bottom. And we're gonna really press along this sewn edge and try to make sure that we get that curve in place so that your mask will fit over the nose and the face a lot better. So we'll really press any fabric out along that seam so that that fold is right there, that seam is right there. We'll do the same thing here at the bottom. Pull any fabric out so there's no overlap here and get that curve nice and smooth that goes along the bottom of your face. So now that the mask is flipped and pressed nicely into shape, we're just gonna top stitch all the way around. We wanna leave a gap though, about one inch to the left and one inch to the right of that top center dart. This is where our piece of wire is gonna go so that our uh, mask can pinch to the shape of your nose. You don't wanna just jump on here though, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge and top stitch around, because not only are we going to try to make a channel here for our wire, we need to also anchor it in place side to side so it doesn't slide. So we're gonna top stitch this beginning and ending in a way that's a little different than we're typically used to sewing. So I'm going to drop on right here at this um, pin that's about an inch, inch and a half to the side of the dart. And instead of just dropping on in the, you know, the eighth of an inch away from the edge, I'm actually going to sew on. So I'm going to sew right from that edge, back tack right there, and sew down about an eighth of an inch, and then all the way around. And then the same thing over here, I'm not just gonna stop at this point, I'll needle down, press your foot up, and actually sew off the edge of the mask. So this is gonna kinda create a wall on each side so that our wire is locked in between those two pieces. So I'm gonna drop on right here, get that pin out of the way. And like I said, I'll go back and forth right to the edge of the fabric to create that wall on the side. Then needle down, press her foot up. I'll just top stitch all the way around. So this is like our typical traditional top stitching method. As I go around this bottom curve, I really wanna press out any fabric underneath here and make sure that that seam is right there at the edge. So if we didn't press it out with our iron, now is the time to really try to get that seam right there. sew over your straps by accident. I'm going to come up this side. And now same thing, now that I'm at the top, I'm going to top stitch as usual until I get to the pin. And then once I'm at the pin, needle down, press your foot up, and go right off the edge and back tack. Now you can see that at each side of that gap, I have stitching that will prevent the wire from sliding left or right when it's on your face. 
So here I have some wire that I'm just going to clip to be the length of this gap that we have across the bridge of the nose of our mask. And you can use whatever wire you have on hand. You can get creative and flatten out a paper clip, an ornament hook. Some people I've heard are using bread ties, whatever you can find. So here's my piece of wire. And I'm just gonna slide it up in between the layers, the front of the mask and the top of the lining. And I'm gonna slide it all the way up so it's in between our two barriers on each side of top stitching and as close as I can get it to that curve at the top of our mask. So I have my wire placed between my two top stitch barriers at each side and I've put quite a few pins around here because it is sometimes difficult to keep the wire in place as you're sewing. You want to drop on right here um, right on top of your top stitching from before and back tack in place and then you're going to just continue along that path and back tack on this side right on top of those stitches that you did before. So this tracks the wire along that top curve and these side pieces again keep it from moving side to side. So like I said you might need a couple extra pins here than you're usually used to using because that wire does sometimes wiggle around on you while you're sewing. Now your wire is locked up there in that channel and your mask can pinch right over top of your nose. So now that your mask is complete and has the wire across the top so we can pinch it over our nose, the inside can open and your filter can go inside, close back up, wear your mask, and you can easily get to the filter to change it if you need to.